We had made a particular podcast about the CBC needed to be disbanded. And we also talked about a lot of people who need to retire. Now you have us representative Eddie Bernice Johnson. She has been in Congress for nearly 30 years. Some of you aren't even have lived that long. And this sister has been in Congress. Now I'm not going to say nothing negative about the sister in itself because it's not about her. Um, she could have been the best, you know, sister out there for the community, but it's still going to go along with what I was saying before. Now, uh, this sister, like I say, she's been in Congress, uh, for 30 years. She is 85 years old. She's not running for reelection. Uh, she said she's choosing not to continue her career in Congress, but it was no easy choice. This is after 30 years. Listen, 85 years old. What I don't understand. And I'm going to keep saying this, and it's just not black America or, or, or it's not just not that it's in the continent of Africa too, because I know I got African brothers and sisters that watch. Okay. It's in the Caribbean too. Why don't y'all want to say, okay, let me move out the way. Let these young brothers and sisters come in and take my place. As a matter of fact, let me, I see I'm getting older. Let me cultivate, let me mentor our young brothers and sisters teach them, you know, this, put them in position. Let me use my resources to help my young brothers and sisters to follow in my footsteps. So we always have some people trying to push the message. And listen, I may not even agree with everything those young people are pushing, but those young people are pushing something for their generation. Just like I had to put something in my generation. That's how you build and continue legacy. But we don't do that in the black community. We have leaders here, the continent of Africa, the Caribbean, wherever else that black people is in control, they want to hold on to power forever. They, some of them even die in office. Representative Elijah Cummins, representative John Lewis, they die in office instead of handing that to the next young brother or sister, you know, that, that's really got the zeal for the community. Now this sister said, you know, it's hard to make that decision when you do something for so many years, their retirement years are defined at a certain age, but it's not nearly as defined as in something like Congress as it is with a regular job. Now they said she's never lost an election in her 15 terms. They said there were times I thought I, it may be if I had somebody to reach to a point where I had to leave, it would be better than trying to make the decision uh, to do so. So I think that's her fault. Because if you say that, well, I really, it's not nobody I want to, you know, uh, basically hand it to, right? That's your fault. You are a congressperson. You in there 15 terms, 15, seriously. And there's no young brother or sister that was interning for you on the Hill that you saw and said, man, that's a bright young man. That's a bright young woman. Let me, let me invest my time. Let me teach this young man. Let me teach this young woman. Because the problem is in the black community is that a lot of y'all are threatened by the younger people. You want to keep your, your, your access. You want to keep all this power. And then we in the midst of y'all doing that, you screw our generation. And then we always got to start from scratch. Think about it. We would be a hundred times ahead. If the generation of the civil rights movement after that was over, they should say, okay, cool. Now we really about to mash the gas now because we got some momentum. No, they stopped pushing and they start, they be, they was happy with the integration and all of that. And just having a, a job and going to, to the Macy's and Bloomingdale's the things they couldn't go to before. If we would have kept pushing, like we were pushing, you know, family, you know, economics, you know, education, you know, in our own communities and kept expanding that, expanding that, expanding that. We wouldn't have had all the issues and problems we would have had. You know what I'm saying? We would be in a better position today. We should have more senators than we have today. We should have more Congress people than what we have today. And a lot of us didn't push because we got so excited. And because some people got excited and got off their square, this is why, you know, shout out to Gary Webb. You know, he lost his life because of it exposed how they put crack cocaine in the black communities. Think about that. And I know it's just it's systemically they broke up a lot of our protections, like people like the black Panthers and all the other ones that was watching for certain things. Right. 
I understood that part of it. Cause oh, they went after every black person that protected the community. They really did. Either some of them were jailed. Some of them were killed or some of them had to leave the country. Unfortunately, but there were still ways to protect the community and not let no, no jokers come in and do whatever they want to do. Now this woman, um, representative Eddie Bernice Johnson, she talked about the Capitol, you know, insurrection. She said it was a dark moment uh, for, Con for Congress Roman Johnson, many years in Congress. She said they were far more positive members. She reflected on her decades of political service. Johnson said, I've been very fortunate that I never lost a race after I started running in 1972. This woman was running before I was born. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? He said, but I also admit, he said there that I have worked every day that I've been in office to try to make things better across the board. Now she was elected to the Texas house of representatives in 1972 in the landslide as the first black woman to win electoral office in her Dallas district. She also served three terms in the Texas Senate and was the only black woman serving in the body at the time in 1977, uh, president Carter appointed her as a regional director for the department of health, education and welfare also serving as the first black woman to hold the position. So in 1992, Johnson ran a democratic primary for the newly created Texas 30th congressional district. She defeated Republican nominee, Lucy Kane, uh, 72 to 25 in the general election. It's in 1994. She defeated Kane again, uh, in the landslide. Now she decided to t retire. There was something she was considering for a while. Um, she says that basically she just wanted to enjoy her life, you know, be a grandmother and everything. Um, and, and, and that's fine. Now they say fellow, you know, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, uh, call, you know, Congresswoman Johnson, a tall Texan. It say, uh, it was, she talked about her retirement. Jackson Lee said it fits well into the definition of a pioneering woman who accepted the challenges of being the only one and the challenges of the difficulty in serving in the early years. But once again, I, I'm going to say this, um, Congresswoman Johnson, I, I, I pray that you have a great life and you enjoy your grandkids and enjoy your time. But I also pray that you inspire many in the Congressional Black Caucus to follow you. I, I really pray that you, you, you speak to your fellow Congressional Black Caucus members and you say, you know what? Take my lead. We've been in here 20 years, 30 years. Let them young people take over. Let, let, let them take over. Follow the lead of Congresswoman Johnson. Many of you. Many of you need to go with your grandkids. And let the younger people come in, run for public office. Okay. Because let me tell y'all now, some of you may say, well, they can do it already. Let me tell y'all how that works. I got to see it firsthand. The Democrat party picks their people. So let's say if representative Johnson want to run again, right? If she ran again, they would, they would be all behind her. So all the money, millions upon millions of dollars will be behind representative Johnson. So let's say if you ran, right. Um, let's say representative, uh, Lakeisha Jones, right? So Lakeisha Jones, she's running for office. Well, they're not going to give Lakeisha no money. They're not going to even split no money with her. Now representative Johnson would have all the money for all the ads, billboards. She's known locally already. Uh, she'll get all the radio interviews. Well, sister Lakeisha here, she got to grind it out. She got to, you know, do grassroots. She got to, you know, kick and claw and scratch to get some money. And sometimes, you know, like I said, through the grassroots, the establishment Democrats like that can be defeated, but it takes a lot. It takes a movement to defeat an establishment Democrat to be honest with you. If you ain't got a movement behind you, then you're not going to really defeat an establishment Democrat because they, they got the purse. That's what it is. And that's what makes uh, these, this thing so corrupt is because establishment Democrats are controlled. And if you go look on fec.gov and type in any of them, you will see all the corporations that, that basically they, they got them in their back pocket. So the key is I hope a brother or sister who care about the community follow up behind her in the 30th district here in Texas, but seriously, many of them need to retire. They need to go 
Matter of fact, the majority of them need to go. The majority. Because they they on this old we are the world thing, and that's just not working in, in today's politics. The Congressional Black Caucus has to be about black people. Just like the AAPI Caucus is for AAPI people. No problem with me. I respect that. You have the the Hispanic Caucus. Therefore, Hispanic people are highly respected, and that's what they should be doing. But when it's a black caucus, it should be for black people, not black people and people of color and all these different. No, 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 no. We have a lot of issues on our own. We need to solve. We have not solved our issues. It's kind of like what the Bible teach. How, how are you going to take the plank out your brother's eye? In other words, how are you going to fix his problems? First, take the plank out of your own eye. In other words, fix the problems in the black community first. Let's fix us first. It's honorable to want to help other people. I get it, but you can't help other people and you did not help yourself first. You helping everybody else with your own house is out of order. You helping everybody else with your own people starving, your own people not being educated. Your own people is, is, is don't have home ownership. Do you know the same percentage of home ownership for black people has not changed since the 1960s. They have kept us at the same level with home ownership and, home, and black Americans need to understand home ownership is the building of wealth. Everybody talk about wealth, 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 wealth. And, and, and they throw that word around a lot. The best way you can get wealth is through home ownership. Because once you own that home, once you got a home, you could sell that home, get a bigger home. You could pass a home down to your kids. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that is the step of wealth. And you look at the white home ownership rates is always higher than black people. If you look at all the set asides they did during the pandemic, homeowners benefited more. They benefited more than us. Why? Because when you're a homeowner, some of them was, was allowed to miss their mortgage up to a year. Now you may say, well, the rent, you know, a moratorium, eviction moratorium, those people still want their money. When it came to homeowners, they had to say, we'll put that money on the back end of your loan. And you need to start paying again at this time. Some of them still got more extensions up to 18 months. And they have to worry about being foreclosed on. You know what I'm saying? So we need to focus on home ownership. Now, Jim Crow Joe, nobody keep talking about this. And I'm the only one I hear, you know, just my opinion. I hear talking about this. Jim Crow Joe said in his lift every voice plan that he wanted fifteen thousand dollars for down payment assistance. And I keep bringing this up I say, well, OK, Jim Crow Joe, you want to do something for black people? Go ahead on and follow through on that fifteen thousand dollars down payment assistance for, for black people to get a home. Because I understand home ownership is, is a ver first step to wealth. And we need that. But all these people that's in the Congressional Black Caucus ain't screaming about that. That's why I say they all need to retire. They all need to go home. And so I hope Representative Johnson inspire her other members to say, you know what? I want to retire too. you know, travel, have a good time. You know, I, I wish you all the best, but just retire, just retire. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you for you know listening to our podcast today. We greatly appreciate you. Uh, for joining us, make sure you tell a friend and uh, to make sure also you share, subscribe, and you know, we'll be back with another one.